Right now is Ohio Congressman Mike Turner. He is the ranking member on the House Intelligence Committee and sits on Armed Services as well. Congressman, thanks very much for being here. You just heard morning, what Mr. Klitschko has to say about what Ukraine needs. Assess the response from the U.S. and NATO allies for us in terms of sending Ukraine what it needs to fight back. Right. Well, you know, you hear these stories and it's very disappointing and confusing when the administration says Russia is not escalating, when in fact this is a totally unprovoked war. Every day that a child dies, every day that there are refugees and families displaced uh, is an escalation uh, of, of this war. Um, the administration has been very slow to provide the aid that's necessary. Um, we have a bipartisan call for the United States to assist in providing the MIGs that have been asked for by President Zelensky. Uh, the administration being timid uh, in this and not, not wanting to be perceived by, by Russia as escalating, when in fact every day, you know, this is an assault on democracy. This is an assault by an authoritarian regime. And uh, I think the world understands that, the American people understand that, and certainly bipartisan support for supporting uh, the Ukraine people. Well, I think you make such an important point, and that is the fact that the Pentagon came out right after we learned that, yes, in fact, Russia has used a hypersonic missile. Uh, the Pentagon quickly came out and said, no, 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 this is not an escalation. We do not view this as an escalation. Why say that? And why wouldn't that be an escalation? We know that this kind of weapon has never been used before in combat. I also want you to uh, react to the fact that Joe Biden keeps telling the Russians exactly what he's going to do. Over and over again, he has said, we will not have ground troops in Ukraine. We are not going to fight Russia. What has been the impact of laying out all his plans uh, clearly to Vladimir Putin? You know, you've just pointed out this is very troubling. I mean, for the Pentagon to say this is not escalation, again, it is escalation. This war is escalating. Uh, Vladimir Putin is continuing to kill innocent people. What you're also seeing with the use of the hypersonic weapon is, is likely a demonstration by Putin to the West. He didn't need this weapon for what he's doing in Ukraine. He didn't need this for the target. It was clearly a, a, a message to the West to show that he has these weapons. But, you know, what we're seeing, I think the biggest impression that people should have, that the president should have, is this is a ruthless regime that, that's killing innocent people. You know, last night here, the Dayton Philharmonic Orchestra opened its performance with the Ukraine national anthem and our national anthem back to back. The entire audience, including the orchestra, stood. The American public get what President Zelensky has said, is that this is about democracy. This is about freedom, as he called President Biden to lead. Yeah. I want to show a graphic of the weaponry that is en route now to Ukraine and get your take on when, how soon do you expect uh, this would actually be useful to Ukraine? 9,000 shoulder mountain Havilland missiles, uh, grenade launchers, stingers, uh, switchblade drones, more than 20 million rounds of ammunition. What's your sense of when this actually can be helpful to Ukraine now that we're in day 25 right. or 26? Right. You know, once again, it would have been great if this had been in Ukraine before the war started for them to be able to defend themselves. But nonetheless, it is an impressive list. Uh, the problem, obviously, is, is that Ukraine is now a war zone. So it's difficult to get anything in the hands of those uh, that are fighting against the Russians and trying to hold them back, defend their cities. Uh, but nonetheless, the NATO allies, uh, Poland and others, are working diligently to try to get these weapons uh, from the United States into Ukraine and into the hands of President Zelensky's troops. Uh, you can see that they are obviously putting them to good use as they are, are not only holding back Russian forces, but also making some advances. We also have a, a copy of the letter that uh, you and your colleagues, a bipartisan letter. I see that you've got a number of signatures from your colleagues on the left urging President Biden to send those jets, additional aircraft needed to defend and secure the skies. Uh, President Zelensky is begging for it. He either wants a no-fly zone or he needs those MiG jets to actually uh, go on offense to clear the air above. Your thoughts on why these jets are not being sent. Why is Biden saying no? 
You know, again, I think it's this, this uh, false uh, premise that they're afraid that they're going to escalate. I think what's important about this, Maria, is that, you know, this is a bipartisan group of members of the Intelligence Committee who openly said as of Thursday in a public statement that the United States should be working to get these MiGs in the hands of Russia. That clearly signals that there's no intelligence that justifies uh, the administration delaying. Uh, this is obviously just an administration policy. They clearly don't see this as the American public does and as Congress bipartisan uh, sees it, which is this is a threat to democracy. Innocent people are dying. Russia needs to be hold, held back or this uh, war will escalate. NATO will be involved. Others in the region could be involved. This is where we need to make certain that we support uh, President Zelensky, Ukraine and democracy. Congressman, I want to take a short break and I want to get your take on the call between G and President Biden. Um, before we take a break, you are the ranking member on the Intelligence Committee for the House of Representatives. Have you been briefed on President Biden's call with our number one adversary, China? No, no, and I think the, you know, it's an outrage. I think that that such a long call would be happening about this conflict without um, either the Intelligence Committee, the Armed Services Committee, Foreign Affairs Committee, or even the American public knowing what happened in that phone call. No briefing. Congressman, let's take a break and then get into what they claim was said. Congressman Mike Turner is with me this morning, and we'll be right back. Stay with us.